not often that we get up to a really classic bird, take a look around, go ooh, go ah, uh, and just salivate all over the place. And after we clean up your airplane from wherever we drooled all over it, look in the panel and really get blown away. What did you do to this airplane? Well, <laughs> this airplane was uh, one of those airplanes that's on your wish list. Uh, since I took my first ride in an airplane at six years old, it was a DC-3 out of Chicago Midway. We wanted to make this airplane absolutely state-of-the-art in terms of situational and position awareness. I had seen the original PR announcements for Aspen Avionics when they were first in concept. When we bought this airplane, we waited till they had developed before we put in our panel. We've worked on a 1941 Spartan Executive and 1939 Waco ARE and made those panels state-of-the-art for those airplanes. But this one was very special because this is a all-weather cross-country airplane. That was our goal and I think we accomplished it with the full complement of Aspen screens. Well, the first question is why Aspen? Aspen gave us everything we needed. We could take the one screen and fill the three holes from previous instruments. Initially, we weren't gonna cut a new panel. We were just gonna be replacing. And once we got into it, we decided that we needed to go a further step to put in the EI electric engine analyzer and to do that, we really needed to cut a new panel. So we just started from scratch, but it was the ease, the simplicity, and the reliability of Aspen that is why we chose that. How long have you been flying the system now? I've been flying it for eight months, and we've had all cross-country trips, and it, it's just worked admirably. Well, it's a shame when you won't go anywhere with your airplane, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, ordinarily, I fly a Citation, but this is so much fun. But you got class here, come on. <laughs> Absolutely. I wish my Citation had a panel like this. Having seen a couple of uh, the Citation panels from a ways back, boy, I can't wait to see what, uh, what happens when this stuff starts translating there. I'm waiting. I, I've got high hopes that Aspen or people like that will be able to come out with uh, avionics that work, that do something for the kind of price that aviators can pay. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. How has the learning transition been? How did you find the training process and then just kind of the learning process as we were using it? The technicians that hit the install, they read the manuals. I did not. It took me approximately six flying hours with somebody who knew what to do in the right seat, but just as a backup, it took me about six flying hours and I became proficient with it on, a, on our first cross country flight, going to Gatlinburg, Tennessee and coming back. And at, at the end of that flight, I was proficient without reading the book. Just went through everything. Just played with it all the way en route and learned. And it was very, very intuitive once you get the basics down. How is this changing your flying? It's really not changing my flying. What it's doing is making me feel a bit safer, a bit more comfortable when I'm up in the air. On the flight here, we did our basic weather pre-flight. Mm -hmm. But once you get in the air, you know, things are what they are. I was able, by using the next rad, to see where the weather was 500 miles ahead of me. I was able to see where the winds were at different altitudes. So I selected, it happened to be 11,500 feet coming here VFR, had the best wind. We wound up making the trip in 3.4 hours to the first fuel stop and 3.4 hours to the next fuel stop. So that was an average ground speed of about 180 miles an hour mm -hmm. with only one fuel stop when it normally would take two. To me, the weather information is probably the most important. And you know, with flight following, if you're doing VFR, it was just, it was absolutely wonderful. Now, another moment of freedom from Sirius Aircraft. Freedom through safety. Perhaps the ultimate freedom is confidence, assurance, and peace of mind. We design it into every personal aircraft we build. It's the security that comes with knowing you're flying the plane with a parachute. The breakthrough concept that launched the Cirrus phenomenon. How 
would you evalu evaluate the traffic capabilities? Traffic capabilities are, again, excellent. They are very real. We had that tested in Santa Fe. Locally in, around the Santa Fe airport, we had a traffic advisory. I was watching the screen and the co-pilot was watching where the traffic was and it was dead on. If we didn't make a maneuver, there could have been a head on. So it was, it's perfect. And especially when you get into a congested area. One of the nice things about a three screen installation is the fact that you can apportion out tasks a lot more selectively than you can on any, even though larger, two tube installation. That's definitely the truth. There's no doubt about it. You could have one screen doing one thing, another screen was split doing something else. And the, the uh, fourth screen on the co-pilot side, we re reversionaried it <laughs> to the primary flight display and the co-pilot was hand flying it while we were just doing other tasks. How about interfacing with your radio stack and is there an autopilot on board? There is an autopilot. We have a STEC 55X and it, <laughs> again it performed admirably using the GPSS mode okay. uh, in heading. There's no work, just monitoring. Using the 55X and in the VNAV mode we could start our descent to avoid shock cooling the engine. We started maybe 60 miles out, told ATC we wanted to do a slow 300 foot a minute descent and we picked our spot and it just brought it down within, it would vacillate maybe within 20 feet above or below the descent altitude. It was great. With your experience so far, what suggestions do you have for Aspen for the future? Suggestions to Aspen would be just to keep doing what they're doing and keep developing the things that they're going to develop. That's all they have to do. They've done just a swell job. It's, this has been so reliable. I can't, I can't think of anything to tell them except to keep doing what they're doing. They're doing it so well.